Hello and welcome uh, to the second module of week 1. So, we will continue our discussion which we started in the first module. So, we talked about uh, what is plastic in the first module. Today, we will try to look at the different types of plastics and uh, as uh, uh, like you will see that uh, uh, we will talk about plastic from its what types based on the different uh, additives in there, uh, different types of usage and all that. So, uh, in this in the entire week, we will be looking at uh, what is plastic which we talked about in the first module. Today, we will focus on uh, in this particular video, we will focus on types of plastic and probably we will continue that discussion in the next video as well in the next module. And then uh, the last two module will focus mostly on the usage and the global statistics like how much plastic is really uh, made uh, in global scale and then also in Indian scale. And why we are discussing all this, this uh, we, the course is on plastic waste management. So, uh, the rationale behind having just to look at what is plastic, types of plastics, uses and global statistics is to uh, try to get an idea on uh, how much plastic is really out there. And because whatever waste will be produced will essentially be will be produced from these plastics only which we are using in different uh, application. So, so, today's focus is uh, looking at uh, uh, how, what are the different uh, plastic uh, like a usage, what are the things we do with plastics. So, uh, it is a, it is we make plastic uh, and the usage of plastic we can classify that uh, based on um, how we are making products. So, you can make products based on all these different bullet points that you see on this particular slide. You can make a plastic product using extrusion, calendaring, flim blowing, injection molding, blow molding and we will talk about each one of that in little bit detail in subsequent slides. So, do not get, uh, do not, do not worry, uh, you will, you will get the explanation as well. So, uh, these are the different ways uh, where uh, how we make the plastic products and based on the way the plastic product is made, uh, it can be classified into different types. So, it can be expanded bead, rotational molding, compression molding, casting, thermoforming and many of these bullet points that you are seeing on this particular slide is also used for other types of other types of uh, manufacturing of products whether it is from based on glass, uh, based on certain metals. So, it is uh, many things are common, but of course, there are certain things which we do for plastic uh, which we do not do for other uh, uh, material. So, in the extrusion, how we work with the extrusion, it is uh, essentially you will, uh, uh, the, if you look at the process behind it, it is you have granules or powders or pallets which is you put it in a hooper as you can see uh, on the sketch. We try to we put the material in this hooper over here and then the plastic pallets are formed is uh, put it in there and fed into this is this is the extruder barrel this is a barrel which is an extruder barrel and as as the extruder barrel is turning as uh, it turns and blends and moves the material down the barrel it's when you say material down it's not the vertical down here it's an horizontal down as you can see in this particular sketch and uh, and then uh, uh, it is a uh, then material then flows through a die where you will there will be a basically a that is that is put it in the desired shape and it is cooled by water or air and then it cuts into different uh, length as you can uh, see it can be tubings or pipings or seats or film. So, this is a uh, basically extrusion extra like you are putting you have a pallets granules powder uh, put it in a hooper uh, kind of make it. Uh, uh, semi solid or liquid uh, kind of form and then you blend it put it put the material down the barrel put it in a die and put it in desired shape and you cool it down. So, so this is very common very commonly used and it is used for uh, all the glasses and other stuff the pipes the folders as you can see in the picture uh, which uh, on uh, on the left side uh, of the of the slide and then uh, the limitations is usually it is limited to sections of uniform cross section. So, you, you need to have why uniform cross section because you already have a desired shape because uh, you cannot have a uh, uh, very like a um, variety of shapes coming out from there. Other uh, we use is a calendaring, calendaring is uh, where you can take a plastic door and there will be two rollers, the rollers will kind of uh, they, they will be rolling as you can see on top, uh, there are two rollers which is trying to make this nice plastic seat which goes through uh, another uh, roller. So, it is like a calendaring which, because uh, as you can see on the pic on the, on the uh, photographs, uh, it is essentially you are 
you are uh, what you are doing is a dug, you make a dough, uh, dough like a very uh, you make a pa paste and a thermoplastic mass you formed into sheet of uniform thickness by pass it through a series of heated or co or cooled rolls and then uh, it's what it it's used uh, we we use it we use this kind of film plastic material either to uh, as a transparency sheets kind of material or uh, you you use it for um, wrapping uh, you put some uh, wrapping or uh, lamination so you can th these kind of materials are used so basically you make uh, you you make a seat material and uh, covering the you are you can also use it for covering the back of certain plastic so those those things are also used but many times when we try to have a blended paper and plastic it is also used over there but there are a, for every process there are limitations so similarly here we have some limitations that very thin films are not possible so it has to be certain thickness because what will happen in a very film uh, very thin uh, film it it will uh, not withstand the uh, 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 the like a stress that is goes through this calendaring process and it may uh, tear apart. So, that is why you need to have certain uh, uh, thickness uh, present. Then uh, film blowing which is again now the another you can go for, uh, for uh, like a, a thinner thinner material. It is here you are con continuously extruding vertically over a semi molten polymer it is like a uh, it is like essentially like a fountain and then you uh, have a uh, bubble layer is maintained. So, you, you are basically stretching uh, the material and try to make it in a film as a uh, in, in particular based on the uh, like a thickness uh, that you require you go for slight modification in the process and then you again since it is a heated up it has to be cooled. So, it is it, the problem with this kind of uh, stuff is it is a it is a costly because uh, the uh, process gets complicated low efficiency less accurate process for this particular course you do not have to really get into very nitty gritty detail of how each of one is being uh, manufactured. The reason why we are trying to go over these slides is to give you some idea that there are a variety of plastics out there. So, when they come to the waste stream it is also a variety of plastics which is coming to the waste stream. So, when we try to recycle more and more plastic types getting mixed together it becomes a problem for us in terms of uh, when we try to go for uh, recycling of these plastic. M mixture of plastic is always you have to uh, as we say in the waste management sector as we say in the municipal solid waste that you have to sort segregate the garbage. Similarly, if you have variety of plastics coming together as a plastic waste we need to sort segregate the plastic uh, waste types as well. So, that is why it is needed uh, the information is needed to understand what are the different plastic uh, uh, types available in the market which will essentially come in, um, in the waste stream. Then other is your injection mold molding which is a very common uh, use for many types of uh, uh, a production process for different uh, here it is a it's similar to die casting metal uh, as you do it for die casting again you have lots of shapes as you can see on that blue picture with all the different shapes uh, there it is uh, uh, that is what uh, it is it is a you have pellets again uh, plastic pellets melted uh, where uh, put it in a heated cylinder melted the screw is rotating here as uh, you can see in this particular pic on uh, this is sketch uh, where we have these uh, uh, the, this is the hooper this will load it the things in here you have the mold this is a heater so things th things will get loaded up and uh, here hydraulic fluid is putting the pressure it goes into this particular mold it passes through this screw it is while it passes through this there is a heater on top and bottom which melts it and then it goes into this mold and makes this uh, different like a beautiful shapes that you see over here. So, based on the type of shapes that you require you can have those kind of molds present. So, a screw will rotate much like extrusion molder it moves back. Uh, as the material is getting uh, melted then it ramps forward pushing the material into the die. So, again uh, what is the limitation for that high initial tool and die cost uh, not pra economically practical for a small run. So, you need to do a massive uh, production of this. So, you will uh, you will set it up for one particular type of material as you can see on this uh, picture uh, there are different types of different types of products so all made from different types of plastics. So, here the thing is that uh, you need to since you will be uh, working with uh, one particular type of shape at one particular time you need to produce a huge quantity of that otherwise uh, if you have to change the shapes uh, this mold very frequently uh, it becomes more and more costly. So, 
So, that is a kind of uh, thing is required and blow molding very it is used for uh, glass bottles as well where uh, it is you have a extruded tube or expanded you put some internal pressure and then you blow it. Uh, so, generally limited to hollow or tubular parts uh, you can use it for some other mold shapes as well other than bottles and containers. So, most of the bottles here you can so you see the steps uh, where you will have uh, first uh, heated plastic is extruded into the hollow, uh, hollow tube uh, then in the second step you will have uh, mold will mold uh, will close and uh, and you will have uh, the, the, the grip is in place the center po center po position is in place then you blow it by putting some compressed air and uh, which will mold into the inflates then you have uh, the whole thing will fill it as you can see from a number 4 where things gets all filled up. Then you let it cool uh, product is uh, trimmed and then it is cool once it is cooled you cu cut it uh, uh, from the top where what this the areas that you do not require as well as the bottom you can take them off and then the material is at number 6 it is ready uh, for shipment. This is how the plastic bottle is made. So, so uh, again you need to uh, but again uh, if, if you sometimes what we do to make the plastic uh, bottle uh, usually it is just one particular type it will be either PET or HDPE uh, most of the times uh, but uh, or LDPE uh, as well. But sometimes you may have a blended plastic together and then in that case uh, the uh, re recycling of that becomes a little bit more challenging. And uh, you can have expanded bead blowing which is uh, another way of uh, you can speak here you take a you take a measured volume of beads. Uh, you can have a you can have a blowing agent which is uh, usually a gas uh, usually pentane dissolved in the plastic being placed in the mold then the closed mold is heated to which will make the plastic soften and the gas will expand and uh, the blowing agent will generate the gas. So, result is uh, fused closed cell structure of foam plastic that conforms to a shape. So, you make uh, so it is a, a it is requires process and material precision uh, and creates uh, some waste. Uh, as part of the process as well. It requires a lot of production methods with limited product application. So, this type of plastic is used in a very limited application. So, it is uh, of course, it may become costly as well. Then you may have a rotational molding uh, where we use for buckets and uh, these trays and the drums those syntax tanks or uh, a big water tank that you see which uh, mostly rotational molding which is used. Here uh, you have a uh, you put a predetermined amount of uh, thermoplastic material powder thermoplastic material you pour it into a mold mold is closed heated and rotated in axis uh, with uh, two planes until contents have fused to the inner wall of the mold then mold is open and the part is removed. So, it is usually it has to be used for hollow parts. So, you can ideal for buckets or any container and uh, production rate is usually slow. But uh, here again uh, uh, you need to have of course, uh, every process has certain uh, uh, process efficiency and you have to be careful in terms of have a very nice uh, 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 I would say rotation has to be in such a way. So, that uh, the plastic really gets very nicely on that mold surface. So, that when it cools down you get a uh, drum or uh, which has uniform thickness throughout. So, those are process uh, stuff which will not go into detail uh, which we will not talk about this is kind of out of scope of this uh, course, but this is how those uh, drums are made. So, you should it is a it is always uh, as, I, as I keep on saying in uh, many of my courses that it is always better uh, to have some idea about uh, although we are worried about we will be worried about when this particular drum ends up in my waste stream, but to have some idea of how this drum was made in the first place is always helps in terms of to see that whether we can potentially reuse it uh, what what could be reuse applications we can have when this drum comes to the waste. Other is your compression molding where uh, uh, you are uh, the previous one where we are actually blowing things up and trying to get it on the surface of the uh, mold. Here we are trying to compress. So, here is a thermoset compound usually uh, performed is uh, you uh, position it in a heated mold cavity. You put that uh, in the heated mold cavity, the mold is closed and then you put heat and pressure is applied. The material will flow and fill the mold cavity. So, it will uh, come to the mold cavity, then the heat will uh, completes the polymerization the part is ejected. So, it is uh, uh, you, we use usually use it for uh, intricate parts containing undercuts. 
side draws, the small holes, uh, delicate inserts, etc. It's a time-consuming process, so it's a, it does take time. So here you are using compression. So you basically have a uh, thermoset compound, uh, which will you use that, uh, put it in the heat uh, mold cavity, then mold you, you put, put heat and pressure, it will go into that particular shape and then uh, you, you use some heat to complete the polymerization and the part will be ejected out. So that is uh, how it is uh, made using the compression uh, molding. Casting, uh, which is again, uh, which uh, we uh, kind of use it. Uh, for many of our uh, uh, production uh, uh, we do uh, in terms of it, it does for plastic, even for clay, we do it for uh, uh, metals. Casting is very, very common stuff, a very old way of doing things. So here uh, any casting as we know, we have to first make it the liquid. So in liquid plastic, uh, you will have a liquid plastic which will be poured into the mold and here without pressure cure are taken from the mold. So you just put into the mold. Then uh, you put a thermoplastic film uh, uh, in terms of the high polished supporting surface. Uh, this process has the you put a large part with thick uh, cross section with good surface finish. So based on uh, the type of material that you require, of course, you have to get the mold made and you put the, the molten, molten plastic, liquid plastic in there and then you uh, the, the plastic as it will cool down, it will take the shape of that particular mold. Before you put the plastic, we need to put a layer of uh, material which will keep the plastic not sticking to the mold surface as we do it for uh, other applications as well. So, since the mold is already kind of predefined, we have the shapes of the material of that particular mold is already predefined. It is, it has a certain limitation in terms of you will can make it for certain types of uh, simple shapes, uh, we can uh, except for cast films method becomes un uneconomical at high volume production rate. So, uh, we have to uh, it is uh, for certain certain material it works fine, but for uh, in, in general it is it is a high volume production uh, rate is required otherwise it become uneconomical. So, we need to produce a large amount of that. Thermo forming uh, where uh, other method of using it. You use a heat a thermoplastic sheet, uh, use a vacuum to pull the sheet over perforated mold, uh, heat softened thermoplastic sheet is positioned over male and female mold, uh, air is evacuated uh, and then forcing sheet to form a contour of the mold. So, here you can uh, limit it to part for simple configuration, you can there is a high scar is sorry high script. Uh, more waste, limited amount of materials from which to choose. So, you can, but you can make a lot of uh, different types of uh, material as you can see like a tray and uh, different uh, parts for uh, uh, like refrigerators, different types of containers and uh, so bowls and uh, like a uh, like uh, I would say cups and other stuffs those are uh, made using these kind of uh, uh, technique. So, again uh, there are different ways of uh, doing uh, making different types of uh, products. So, based on all these different uh, things that you saw uh, to make uh, we use uh, if you keep an eye on all the material that you use from morning to evening from when you get up in the morning and the time you get to the bed in the evening and in fact maybe several parts of the bed itself is plastic nowadays. So, we use variety of plastic material. And they are made in a variety of way. Uh, so, the examples that was shown to you in uh, the slides in this particular module so far was just trying to have an illustration of uh, what are the different types in which a plastic is made and it is not a there are there could be other ways of make manufacturing plastic products as well. These are the uh, I would say most common most prevalently found uh, uh, methods of uh, making plastic and as you saw it is not uh, many of those uh, method is not only unique to plastic we use it for other other stuff uh, too. So, and then uh, these uh, uh, different types of products is made using these different methods. So, now we will try to look into some, some uh, into the characteristics of plastic. So, when we say uh, plastic uh, different uh, application uh, since say for example, if you want to have a very heavy duty tray uh, where you will be carrying a lot of soil and other stuff. So, you need a really strong word a strong material as opposed to having a uh, I would say uh, just if you want to use it something for single use 
uh, small uh, container or you want to uh, like a film plastic kind of material or uh, single use uh, 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 like plates. So, uh, as you can see there are lots of plates nowadays which is very, very thin plastic. So, which is essentially single use or maybe used for a couple of times and then it uh, not used anymore. So, what I am trying to say is based on different types of application, different types of plastic is used and sometimes the manufacturing methods will also be different. So, let us look at some of the characteristics of plastic and then to see that how the product uh, uh, relates with the uh, different plastic characteristics. So, each type of plastic has very distinct characteristic, but most of the let us look at some of the general attributes like general properties. It is why plastic is so popular for the first place. Let's, so, this will kind of try to explain that plastic can be very resistant to chemicals and corrosion. So, as opposed to some other material. So, we see over say 30 years ago, we were we had very less amount of plastic or, or you can predominantly say essentially no plastic in our day to day usage around 30 of maybe 35, 40 years ago. Gradually we start today, we cannot even think of uh, our day without using plastic. So, it is why it has become so popular. The reason for that it is its resistance to chemicals, resistance to corrosion. It can be both thermal as well as electrical insulators. So, it is a thermal insulator. What do you mean thermal insulator means? It does not let temper uh, heat to pass very quickly and same thing with electrical insulators. It, uh, it uh, does not let electricity to pass it through. Uh, many times that is why you see the we have uh, copper wires or the aluminum wires. They have a wrap of those plastic material. So, different multicolor, uh, some blue, some, uh, some green, black, different colors are used for uh, and that acts as an insulator. So, plastic is used as an insulator material for electrical, have a very high strength to weight ratio. So, one of the thing is for many of the, uh, many of the application, uh, if we have high strength, but very low weight uh, that, that becomes very handy. So, uh, so, that is that's, that's the positive point in plastic. It is a very high strength material uh, as compared to the weight. It is highly durable, does not get bad with water and have low toxicity as well unless the problem that we get in plastic is when it is mismanaged, when we are not managing the plastic properly, when things are getting into oceans and the rivers and other stuff. Just last week, uh, uh, like uh, I had a, I was working with uh, some people from National Geographic and uh, we will, I will keep you updated as we uh, move in different weeks, if we have some more update on that. So, that there are lot of focus around the globe right now is uh, how much plastic is getting into water because that is uh, uh, because when the plastic gets into water and uh, eventually to sea to the ocean, uh, it uh, in the ocean currents and through the, all the flows that are happening there, it gets it is it is starts getting into uh, small small pieces and those pieces uh, when it is especially if it is a white kind of in color, very bright color, uh, white uh, which signs on the light and then the birds think that it is a food, it is a small, a small kind of fish or even the bigger fishes eat those plastics thinking that it is a small fish and that becomes a problem, the plastic starts getting into the food chain and uh, we get worried about plastic showing up in our fish body and we do not want, we do not want to consume plastic uh, when we, when we are enjoying the fish. So, it is it's, it's resistant, it does not a uh, good thing about plastic, it is a resistance to water as compared to uh, if you look at the other material that is replaced mostly uh, paper based material. And uh, it has low toxicity unless it's, uh, it starts getting into all those uh, uh, kind of uh, oceans and other stuff where it becomes a problem. Even then it is not a, it is essentially a mismanagement problem rather than a plastic toxicity problem. Plastics are material with the limited, limitless range of applications. You can make different colors, you can, uh, you can use it for variety of purposes as you can see from, uh, from, from uh, when we look, start looking at these uh, uh, material that we use for uh, uh, from from as I said from the toothpaste, toothpaste and toothbrush all the way to your uh, 
uh, evening uh, uh, stuff uh, like whether you are even sometimes when you have take the medicine it will be in a plastic container so those so it's a variety of application and the reason for that is uh, it it's a it's a limitless range of characteristics it can it can fit in at many places in our uh, daily requirement of uh, stuff and it you can make it variety of colors and it's easy to make so that's uh, with all that uh, it becomes easier in terms of uh, uh, character that's why it becomes uh, very very popular to use the plastic in there so if you look at the plastic uh, uh, like in the kind of what we have talked so far in this particular module if we would try to uh, summarize and take the discussion in a different level so plastics it's uh, there are uh, uh, there are two major type you can say if you look at respect to heating if one is thermoplastic one is thermosetting plastic so we use this term earlier as well in the slide thermoplastic and thermosetting plastic then if you think about from a structural it is a either homogeneous or heterogeneous structure and we'll talk about some of these uh, in little bit detail but not too much detail just uh, then we have a physical and chemical properties either it's a soft or rigid or semi rigid or elasto elastomers uh, which is uh, like a has some elasticity in that and also depends on type of resin when I say type of resin, whether it's a PET, uh, HDPE, PVC, LDPE, PP, and PS. So, P, what is PET? It's the polyethylene, uh, which uh, we are talking about. That PET is the mostly the bottles that uh, water bottles that you use, whether it's a Bislory, Equifina, and uh, Kinle, or whichever brand you buy. Uh, most of the time, it's a PET. Then uh, HDPE is those containers uh, where you have the tight de detergent containers, the fola containers and those kind of material, uh, those are your HDPE. Even the plastic bottles, abyssalary bottles or Ecofina bottle, the cap, cap is uh, HDPE. The ring below the cap, which is actually connected together before you unscrew, unsealed it, which is a seal and then while you, where you try to drink it, you unseal it, it becomes, uh, it's your uh, HDPE material as well. LDPE, we made some of those, uh, uh, some, of the con some of the containers uh, we make using LDTE, polypropylene is used, polystyrene is used, PVC is mostly for pipes. So, uh, these are, so these are the typical, these are the most common ones and then uh, uh, we use some of the blended plastic together as well, especially in, in electronics and other applications. So, uh, this, in this particular module, what we were trying to look at, uh, if we try to summarize, we started looking at what are the different uh, what are the different ways in which plastic is made what are the limitations of each of the method just brief overview of how the method works and what kind of product is made using that particular method then we st also st uh, looked at some of the characteristics of plastic why plastic is so popular and what are the different properties of plastic which makes it popular then uh, also looking at the classification in terms of broad classification of uh, plastic based on uh, its heating, based on its structure, based on physical chemical properties and based on the type of resin used. So, in terms of the type of resin, uh, we also put uh, numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and uh, 1 means it is easy to recycle and as we increase the number, it becomes difficult and difficult to recycle based on the available technology today. So, when, whenever you look at any plastic product, look at whether it has a recycling number and if it is a recycling number, that means uh, uh, based on how close it is to number 1, uh, it kind of gives you an idea of how easy it is to recycle. So, every resin has a number, PET is 1, HDP is 2 and then likewise we have other uh, numbers in there. So, with that, let us close this particular module and then we will continue our discussion in the next module. One thing I would like to uh, again emphasize that we do have a discussion board going on. So, if you have any question, you have any queries, uh, please post it on the discussion board and that is that's the mode we will use for communication in this particular class and uh, again you will have your uh, first assignment coming out very soon. So, go over the video if needed again and again and uh, all the best and uh, I will see you again in next uh, module. Thank you.